All right, friends, exciting times here. We are at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show here with Keith Crivet. Good to meet you, Keith. Okay, nice on, to meet you. Uh, so behind us, we have the brand new 53 Albemarle Spencer sport fishing yacht. So we're going to take a look inside and out and uh, kind of go a little bit of the background, how it all got started. So stay tuned and let's see what she's all about. All right, Keith, I'm amazed. I mean, it's just beautiful on the inside and what I've seen so far. Haven't really gone through the boat, but it's really nice. Tell us a little bit of background, how this partnership got sparked. Well, at Albemarle, we, we've been in business for 46 years. Our flagship has been the 41. Uh, we've been very successful over the years, but we've always entertained the idea of a larger boat. And, you know, within the last three years, it finally, became more of a topic and, and, and it was one of those conversations of how do you start it what how big does it need to be and it was mainly just a step up for us for our owners who were asking for larger boats right uh, so in in the conversations we had obviously we know paul from you know being local to us from boat shows from tournaments and just a great guy great family we reached out to him more or less just for advice really you know, what do, what do you see your customers asking for? What what do you think this boat needs to look like? And obviously, everybody knows just Spencer Ride. That's right. That's what she's known for. That's what it's known for. Uh, so, and that was most important to us. It always has been. We've always focused more on how the boat performs offshore, and then everything else falls in line behind that. Right. So, one of the scariest things when you go into tooling a new design is you get all your molds built and get the entire boat completely finished. And then you find out what you have. Right. So by the time you run the boat for the first time, you have a ton of time and money tied up in that investment. Before so, you really know the finished product. Exactly. Yeah. And you have a mold that's already built. That's right. So we uh, we went to Paul more or less for advice on have you have you built a boat around this particular size or boats in this size that you're really proud of that you think you could help us with on a bottom design. Right. Um, and Paul surprised us. He, he he reacted and said, "I I do. I know I know a couple of boats, and I know about how you, how you may need to design the bottom." And he said, "But I'd like to do more if you're interested. I'd like to be a partner." Wow, uh, which surprised us as well. Yeah. But he builds seventies and eighties routinely now, and everybody seems to be going up right. bigger and bigger. Uh, but he believes that this mid fifties category is the perfect fit for tournament fishing for going into smaller marinas, managing with a smaller crew, being able to basically have a boat that's capable of running with larger boats, but have it in a smaller package that's easier to maintain. I uh, agree. But he, you know, obviously for him to step back and build a 53-foot boat would be counterproductive for him that's because right. he's building 80s routine. Right. So um, he's always wanted to get into the production side of it, but obviously the, the barrier to entry there between the, the equipment and the facility and the people, it's a big step. So for him, it was a way to get into production and provide a stepping stone for customers to get into his boat, and even some of his customers that want to go back down to smaller size boats and get it in a, I won't say a high volume because we're not going to mass produce them, but to be able to build three a year. Right. Um, so it made sense for everybody when we kind of sat around the round table and talked about it, but that's how the partnership started. And for us, it you know, to have his input on the hull design was priceless for us because he had built boats in his size. He's seen them perform and run on. So it's not like you're just drawing a new hull up and second guessing. And not to mention they're proven tournament winter holes. Exactly. You, you know what I mean? Because that, that the hull design makes a huge difference on raising fish. A lot of people don't believe in that, but I do. Absolutely. And, I mean, it's it's the hull design and it's the just the way you lay everything out, the balance of the boat. I mean, there's a lot of factors. In it. Right. Uh, Obviously, they know what they're doing. Yeah, um, for sure. And you know, he he expressed a lot of faith in us. And Paul's a really humble guy. You know, for what he's done and what he's been able to accomplish in his life, his family, and their business, he's really humble, really open to helping. Uh, you know, during the process, it's we built inboard boats for forty years. Right. So it's nothing new to us. It's just more. You know, it's larger, yeah. bigger engines, bigger running gear, but it's still. 
inboard running gear, it's still the same balance. It's still paying attention to CG and how the boat's put together. Uh, it's been an interesting partnership and, and, you know, very little back and forth. Most of the time we're, we're on the same page nine times out of 10 when we start talking about something. That's awesome. Now in your production plan, did you have to make a lot of modifications uh, for a boat this size? We did. Um, interestingly enough, when we started talking about this, we were we were looking around the 47, 48 foot size range, and that's more or less just a step and step 41. Right. And then, of course, as we started talking about design and started talking about mechanicals and what the boat could do and what the boat could hold and what people were looking for, it, it continually got bigger and bigger. Um, we stopped at 53 because our lamination shop was only 56 feet wide. <laughs> wow. So we had to be able to get the mold in the lamination shop. Right. Um, it took longer than expected, but at the same time, we wanted to do it right. Right. What is your, to... speaking of that, what is your turnaround time on one of these, do you think? An average, we're not going to hold we're, it. We're hoping to build, I think right out of the gates, we'll do two a year. Right. Uh, and we hope to increase that from three a year, maybe more. But uh, in order to do that, you know, we're just going to have to expand. The building that we're in is a, is a, is a good size facility. You know, once you put two of these holes back to back and then you bring the deck in, it tightens up pretty quick. So the only way you can get that any faster is you, you build it the same way, you just build multiple stations. You right. add more stations to that production. Now, is that gonna be a per order build or are you just gonna continually, you know, keep one in the works the whole time? I uh, will keep them in the works, but as of right now, I mean, and, and the way we run the rest of our production, some of the smaller boats, We'll build for inventory because we have a dealer network and they need inventory to sell, obviously. Right. Um, but the majority of our orders have customer names on them and they have specs on them. Right. And that, that's what I that's what I envision here. I, and, and that's the case so far. We have them lined up already uh, without even showing the boat. So my, my, it may have a stock dealer who's taking one for inventory, but right. I don't know if that's going to happen right. for a while. I think the majority of them are going to be spec'd out by customers. And that brings me to my next question. How customizable are these boats? So we consider it semi-custom. Right. Um, obviously what Paul does is custom world. Every boat is different. Every hull is totally built different. Here we have molds for basically the hull, the, the whole house and deck system, the whole cockpit. The interior is really where it the, really the interior is the options that you have to have. So we've been doing that for years. Um, like, like I said, our 41, we sell a boat to the Great Lakes, we sell a boat to South Florida, or we send a boat to California, or send a boat to Cabo. Obviously that's very different fishing. Right. You know, it's everything from you know mainly live bait fishing to slow trolling at a knot and a half in some cases, you know. So how we set boats up depends on where the boat is going. So I see this being the same way. If you're a big live bait fisherman, we can load it up with live wells and make it just tuna tubes and everything else. Right. Uh, if you're primarily bill fishing and all you do is troll, which is the case on this first boat. Um, for instance, like in the cockpit, completely sealed cockpit. He didn't want any hatches at all in the cockpit. That's all. Be able to back down, fill the boat up, never get a drop in the build, which sounds, as a builder, I love it. You're right. It's less, less trouble. Yeah. Um, Paul two is going to New Jersey, which is a, he, he's a, he's a hell of a fisher. He, he's really big in the tuna, uh, runs to the canyons and just needs to load the boat with meat. Yeah. So he's going to have large fish boxes. So there. we're going to actually build a, a in deck, in deck fish box for him. And we'll have it set up to where we can still, we'll have an entry hatch to that large fish box. And then the leaning post will actually be on top of it. It'll run up under the shaft alley that's currently in this boat. Right. Uh, and then we'll have a hatch to get the running gear and your lazarette behind that. So two very different boats. Uh, number two is going to have a tower, whereas this one has a hard top. We'll do a few things interior-wise differently. Uh, like this is running an Omni Sonar. He'll be running the SY50 on the Hulk 2. Uh, a little bit difference in what he's looking for for electronics. So when we say semi-custom, really I see every boat being different. It may look the same from a distance, but when you walk through the boat, I think you're going to see a lot of different features on every boat. Right. Well, that's awesome. I'm I'm uh, super happy to be here on the very first doing this interview and the walkthrough with you. And uh, we're going to take it here and uh, take a little tour of the boat. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm.